eons ago, a great clash took place between the two titans, the Bionis and the Maconis, ending in their mutual demise. Their bodies solidified into land masses, serving as the environments that Shulk and his companions explore in the present day. Let us take a glimpse into each of these sprawling regions. Located at the foot of the Bionis, Colony 9 is inhabited by the sentient Homs. It is Shulk's birthplace, as well as where he and his childhood friends, Rhine and Fiora, reside. Wild creatures roam about and are docile and less attacked. So outside of a few savage beasts, this area is largely peaceful. These stronger enemies can be engaged should the need for a challenge arise. Staying on the beaten path will practically guarantee safety, but wander off too far and some may find themselves facing total oblivion. This vast open plain makes up the leg of the Bionis. With a lush atmosphere and its iconic overhanging cliffs, Gower Plain is home to a myriad of secrets to uncover. The hidden tribe of the Turkin make their home here, as do refugees from the now devastated Colony 6. On Gower Plain, staying on the beaten path may not ensure complete safety, as plenty of aggressive high-level monsters roam about. And when it comes to packs of monsters, a herd mentality is in play. Attack just one, and those in proximity will retaliate. With uncharted caverns and tunnels, in-depth side quests, and dangers far and near, Gower Plain is where the adventure begins to truly open up for those who wish to explore. Machna Forest is a scenic woodland on the Bionis' back, and the home of the Norpon, guardians of a mysterious portal. It is comprised of a deep jungle and perilous ravines that can set back travelers who fall into their recesses. Majestic waterfalls, along with pools of magical ether deposits available for harvest, complete this picturesque landscape. Stealth is of the essence here, for as you're exploring, you may come across smaller enemies in command of their larger brethren. Sneaking past these menacing creatures is necessary for completing certain side quests, so tread lightly and carefully. The idyllic and utopian Aerith Sea, perched atop the Bionis, is home to the High Entia, the most technologically advanced civilization on the Bionis. Notable landmarks include Alchemoth, the futuristic floating city, and Prison Island, which contains a dark secret related to the Monado. Keen observers will notice that the Aerith Sea is the first location where floating islands appear. But how and why do they stay afloat? The topography of the Aerith Sea is composed of these islands, as well as exquisite sandy shores. Transporters can be utilized to navigate around this floating paradise, so it is important to figure out which transporter takes you to which island to get around more easily. This giant sword, the very same that struck the Bionis, now functions as a bridge. It can be crossed to travel between the two titans and is the only way to reach the Maconis, currently overrun with the terrorizing Mekon. The winding maze of Sword Valley can easily disorient travelers if they do not mind their surroundings. Control towers must be accessed to open gates, which are essential for progression. This is where Schultz's war with the Mekon truly begins, culminating in a showdown with his greatest adversaries. There are more areas to explore outside and inside the Bionis and the Maconis. And for the first time, the Bionis' shoulder is within reach at last. Venture into this unknown region and unravel the mystery behind a strange new enemy. Xenoblade Chronicles, Definitive Edition.